Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. Today I'm going to show you six of my favourite blocks that you can make using a charm square pack. Now a charm square pack is 42 5 inch squares and the colours have all been chosen for you so they match. So today I'm using one called 30s Playtime and it's lovely because it's got all these tiny little flowers, it's even got tiny little cotton reels on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you block one and block one is a disappearing nine patch. So you join nine five inch squares together as I've done here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up the center and across the middle. So the squares that you like the best keep to your four corners because they will be complete squares and the other ones get cut. So I've joined these together so I'm going to cut up the centre so that is two and a quarter inches that I'm going to measure and that's exactly in the middle. So I'm just going to double check that, make sure that I've got that right. Two and a quarter. And then straight up the middle. And then I'm going to turn my board. And I'm going to do that again, two and a quarter. And then you can rearrange these squares any which way you want to. So if I'd have done this with the whole pack, I would have much more colour to rearrange. And you can see the corner pieces when I cut this have remained whole and the centre pieces have gone into a quarter and then the side pieces have gone into a half. So the colour all gets mixed up and you can join those any which way you want to when you've used your whole pack. So that block is called a disappearing nine patch. Now we're going to move on to a magic four patch. And I'll show you why this is magic. So you join four of your five inch squares together like this. And then you measure out from the seam one and a quarter inches. So I'm just putting the one and a quarter measure there and I'm going to cut. I'm going to turn my mat around. So trying not to move the fabric. So I'm going to turn my mat all the way around and I'm going to do exactly the same. So I put my one and a quarter line on the seam and cut, carefully lifting my ruler this time. Turn it again, one and a quarter on that centre seam. And cut. And if you haven't got one of these rotating cutting mats, if you've got a small cutting mat, you can pick that up and turn it round because what you don't want to do is you don't want to move your fabric because you need to stay as accurate as you can with this. And then when you've done that, what you need to do is you need to move all of these pieces. So you've got a piece here at 12 o'clock and you move that around to three o'clock. Your three o'clock piece, you move to six. Your six, you move to nine. And your nine, you move to 12. So you can see that you jumble those up and then you join those three together, those three together, those three together and then you join the top to the middle, the middle to the bottom and that creates your block and that's called a magic four patch. 
So you can jumble your fabrics any which way you want to, but I quite like the fact that I've got a large square and then it's echoed with a small one and you can see that that's been repeated throughout. But the choice is yours. You can mix them up and make it however you want. So that's a magic four patch. The next block I'm going to show you is a half square rectangle. And what you do is you take two of your five inch squares, preferably a light and a dark, or you could do it where you've got a plain color. Say if you bought a white charm pack and you put it with this and you could do every one with a white piece against it. So I'm going to just go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch down here and a quarter of an inch down here and then I'm going to come back and cut it. And this is a half square rectangle. So you can see here that I've done a quarter inch seam either side and then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure two and a half inches across from the edge. So I'm putting my two and a half inch on the edge and I'm going to cut straight up the middle and you can see that I've got my half square rectangles. So you would join them like that or you could put a highlight strip at the bottom if you wanted to, and you can make another design that way. So that's quite a versatile block. And I would just press these towards the darker fabric. So there we have that block. Now, before I go into the next block, if you like what we do, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. You can meet the team, you can see pictures of customer makes and we'll answer all of your questions in the comments below. So I'm now going to show you how to make a half square triangle. And you'll see here I've got two of my squares and I've got a light and a dark put together and I am going to use pins just to hold these together. I've also drawn a diagonal line corner to corner on my fabric using one of these iron off marker pens. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch either side of this line. So I'm putting my guide on the line and that will ensure that I've got a quarter inch either side. Turn it around and come back down the other way. And then I'm going to cut on the drawn line straight up the middle. I'll give these a press. And there we have our half square triangle blocks. And you would just cut off these little corners. So you can either do that with your rotary cutter or you can take a pair of scissors and just snip these little ears off to square them up. So they are your half square triangle block. Now I'm going to show you how to make an hourglass block and you start off in exactly the same way. So you have a light and a dark or a contrast. So you put those together and you do as I've done with the half square triangle, you draw a line on the diagonal and we're going to sew either side of that.
and then we're going to cut up there as we did on the previous block. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place our blue block on top of the yellow. So it goes like this. So you can see there I've got a blue and a yellow and I've got a blue and a yellow the other way. So because I've pressed my seams towards the yellow fabric, I can just pop a pin in there and those seams will back together nicely. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another line corner to corner. So on the opposite side to your seam, so you can see your seams going that way. So on the opposite corner to corner, we're going to draw a line. You could always fold this, of course, and press it if you wanted to just make a crease if you didn't want to use a pen. And then I'm going to go back to the machine and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch either side of that line. And now I'm going to cut straight up the middle of my drawn line. And you can see that I've created an hourglass block. So I'll just give that a little press. So you can see that we've got something called an hourglass block. And when you lay this out, you would lay it in opposite ways. So you'd have your yellow block going top to bottom. And then the next time you'd have it going side to side. So if you chose lights and darks, you would alternate your blocks. And again, you would just take your scissors and trim off these little ears to square off your block. So you can do it with a rotary cutter, as I said earlier, or you can do it with scissors. So they are called hourglass blocks. Now, last but not least, I'm going to show you the cathedral window block. And I've left this till the end because this one can be a little bit tricky, but it is fun to do if you get it right, of course. So you need five squares and your centre square, you are going to fold wrong sides together. So you folded it in half, wrong sides together, and I'm just gonna give that a little press. I quite like that, it's got cotton reels on it. And then I'm going to sandwich this between these two blocks here, like this. So I'm going to put a red one behind. So I'll just show you that again. I've got this folded in half. I'm going to lay it on top of that and I'm going to sandwich it together and I'm going to sew top to bottom. Let's pop a pin in there. And then I'm going to do exactly the same. Once that's sewn, I'm going to sandwich it between these two blocks. So it will be easier once I've done it on the machine to show you. So I'm going to sandwich it like that and sew down. So I've got this half of a square folded in the middle. So I'll show you how to do that on the machine. I'll just show you that again. It's folded in half and one edge is sandwiched between these. So we're just gonna do a quarter of an inch seam down here. I'm going to open this up and then we're going to sandwich it again. So you can see on here that I folded these back 
and then I'm going to sandwich it again on this one. So I'm going to put it at the edge. Put one over the top. So that you end up with something that looks like that. So you can see that it's caught between the fabric. Then the next thing you do is you take this centre one and you open it out like this. And then you push your seams, one going one way, one going the other. We've got quite a bit of bulk going on here. So you can see they're going to butt together. I'm just opening it out. I'm going to put those together and I'm actually going to pop a pin in there just to hold that. And then I'm going to pull this out a little bit because this needs to fold and this needs to be sandwiched between those two. So again, I'm going to put a pin in there to hold that. And the same on this side, I need to just pull that out and make sure that that's going to sit there. I'm just going to move this middle one a minute because it's not quite where I want it to be. That's better. a little bit fiddly but we're getting there so pop a pin in there and then we're going to sew right the way across and hopefully we're going to catch that inside the seam So you can see how that has been caught into the seams. So I'm just going to take that over to the iron to give it a good press. And you can either pull it back and stitch it in a curve, or you can just have it like that. So you've got this going over the top of your other squares. But I'll give it a good press so you can see what I mean. So that's your cathedral window block. And as I say, you can just leave it like that. Or if you wanted to, you could pull it down and press it so you've got a nice curve like that. So if I show you that on all four sides, it just gives it a different shape. And you can stitch that down or that can form part of your quilting. So I'll just do those two and I'll just pop a pin in to show you because if you did it with all four, the shape that you would get. So that's a different shape for your cathedral window block. So if you were very clever, you could end up with your cotton reel right in the centre. So you can almost fussy cut round things if you wanted to cut your own squares. But that's just an idea of what you can do with charm squares. And with these blocks, they will work with any square. So if you wanted to cut yourself six inches or eight inches, or even if you wanted to do these blocks using a layer cake, which are 10 inch squares, they would all work. So as always, have fun, and I look forward to seeing you next time here in the sewing studio.